been a lot of talk <laughs> about X-Men 97. Uh, everything from the first reactions to it, the first reviews coming out over the first three episodes have been absolutely glowing. That's great. There's been the not-so-great part about their creator of, of X-Men 97 and showrunner and writer and producer suddenly being fired a few days before the show debuts and premieres under very, let's just say, hushed circumstances. Nobody's talking about what's going on. But attached to it as well has been a little bit of controversy. You know, once the first trailer for X-Men 97 came out, we started seeing a lot of people, let's say, complaining. And talking about things that have nothing to do with the story, like basically, let's not uh, dance around it, Morph. They came out and said Morph was going to be a non-binary character and, and whatever. And that got a lot of people very, very upset, very angry, very upset, very mad. Why? I'm not sure. I'm not sure that they think Morph is going to sneak into their house in the middle of the night <laughs> and, uh, you know rub their nipples in their faces. I, I have, I have no idea why it upset them so much, but there were a lot of people who were very, very, very upset. Well, a couple of the people who are a little bit confused by people being upset and quite frankly, disappointed and upset that there are people being upset are the original creators of the X-Men 90s or X-Men animated series, the original X-Men animated series, uh, who think it's just, uh, a lot of nonsense, and even using a phrase like, did you people learn nothing from our actual original show? Anyway, this comes to us from the folks over at Variety who wrote the following. Uh, Morph returns to the team in X-Men 97 with a new look. Instead of appearing as a brunette man, Morph is now a non-binary with a bald head and white mask-like face. DeMeo, who's now gone, confirmed the change in an interview before he was fired. But after uh, the first trailer dropped, some fans took to X slash Twitter and called it a woke change for the sake of diversity. Now Morph's creators are pushing back on the criticism, the original creators of the original X-Men animated series, saying the hero being portrayed as non-binary totally aligns with their original designs. For me, this is one of the creators talking, the word non-binary is the same word as shapeshifter, Houston says. Every character that can change from one gender to another or from a human to an animal, that's just another word for shapeshifter to me. Eric Luald points to Morph's resurrection in season two of the animated series when the former teammate transforms into Rogue, Storm, and Jean to get revenge on the X-Men. He says, he attacks Wolverine, his closest friend, in the most dramatic way by turning into Jean Grey and putting his hand on Wolverine's neck and leaning in for a kiss. That's as non-binary as you can get. It's Morph turning into a woman and coming into Wolverine, uh, coming on to Wolverine to freak him out, he says. Uh, it was all there in Morph's character. Now it's become, this is key, now it's become such a social thing that I think people will be more sensitive to how it's used. And that's the only difference. We didn't see a problem in reading him and didn't feel that he was any different. Now, this is where it gets interesting. It's not lost on the creators that the same message, this is the important part, that the same message the X-Men extol, fighting for others and uniting over their differences, is just as relevant today as it was in the 1990s, whether it's the, in the 1990s or the 2020s, the X-Men have an important place in TV and pop culture, and now a different generation can experience their good. The series creator said, did we teach you nothing? Did we teach you people nothing? Were you not watching? Julia Lewood said. Did we not figure out how to be nice to each other and how to get along? It's very odd to feel like we are still dealing with these same issues that we were dealing with 30 years ago. It's painful, she says. I, I read that this morning and... Like the, the, the thing that came into my head the most is if I wonder, because this is what I got from the creator's words, I wonder if the people who are jumping up and down and complaining about this morph character and complaining about how you have somebody, somebody who's different in there, I wonder if these people realize that they are every villain in the X-Men stories. Like whenever we watch X-Men stories and whenever you watch any X-Men story, inevitably you'll have the shot of the angry gathered crowd holding up protest signs saying, God hates muties. Muties must go. 
muties are scum, mutant filth, mutants are geez. I wonder if the people who are now vocally complaining that in the X-Men they now have this character who isn't, doesn't even remotely look human, right? Doesn't even remotely look human. I wonder if these people realize that they are these people. They are the actual people in the X-Men universe who would stand on the on the sidewalks and yell, muties must go and down with mutants and all that kind of stuff, right? They're, that's them. And when, Rob, when the creator is talking about, like, did you guys learn nothing from our original show? Like, you say you're fans of our show. Did you not watch it? Because the thing you are crying about right now is the very thing we were trying to, like, be against <laughs> before. And this is what kind of the message of the X-Men, Rob, even if you go back to like Stan Lee talking about the creation of the X-Men and, and some of the motivations behind him creating X-Men and stuff like that. Anyway, I thought it was kind of interesting hearing it. And I wonder how much of an issue this is going to be moving forward, if any kind of an issue at all. Anyway, you heard the the statements by the creators of the show. What do you make of what they were saying? Well, I, I kind of have a little bit different take on it. I should point out that starting right here in my observatory i have thousands of dollars worth of x-men omnibuses uh, and to me the x-men are the comic the way i love star trek is kind of the way i love the x-men and the thing about the x-men like many things uh many characters that are created allegorically you know like when rod sterling created the twilight zone there were things he couldn't talk about on tv you know because network standards and practices so they couldn't address these issues directly but they would do it in a sci-fi fantasy context, so it made it more palatable for people to maybe learn lessons from. And the, what they pointed out about Mor Morph's character, how Morph could turn into both male and female characters, and 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 Morph could already do that, you know. So allegorically, the X Men have always stood for any group, you know, anybody, no matter who you were, whether if you were uh, different ethnicity, if different sexuality, whatever you were, the X Men were were there for you as stand-ins and they sort of stood in for anybody who considers themselves an outcast or downtrodden or underrepresented, you know, even in X-Men two, it's like, can't you just try not being a mutant? You know, there's that great, that was such line a great that line. skirting the skirting. But, but I think that what, what's really weird to me, what's really odd to me is, is once, you know, you do take a character and set them firmly in the politics of the day, it's sort of in a way it, it then specifies what group, the X-Men are representing. And I think in a way that could limit you in the long run because the X-Men should stand for everybody. And when you start defining which groups that they stand for, I don't have a problem with it. But to me, it sort of kind of misses the point and limits you because you're, you're, it, you know, you're placing the X-Men and they've transcended. They made them all the way through the 60s. They made it through the 70s. They've made it through the 80s. They've made it through the 90s. You know, North Star was a character that was originally created to be gay, and then they chickened out. So then they, they turned him into. They went a, back to it though. Yes, eventually they did, they and did. and and it was a great. It's it's a great cover where North Star actually gets married, and you know North Star, Alpha Flight, good Canadian kids. <laughs> so I love. Uh, by the way, where's that movie Marvel? Where's the Alpha Flight movie with all those characters? Because man, do I love them. But that's the only thing. I mean, d is 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 planting characters firmly in the politics and what's going on today and defining them that way, where are they going to be in the next 10 years or the next 20 years? You still, from my perspective, you want the X-Men to always represent anyone who's ever felt for whatever reason to be an outcast or to be part of a group that is oppressed. It's the X-Men that are there to fight for all of you. And that, that's, that's the only thing I would say. But and then they, Go ahead, go ahead, finish your thought. Oh, no, no, then the, the character, the um, the creator said, I mean, Morph was already doing those things, you know, and and which was cool. I, I, I you know. I see, I to me, I don't, I, I don't know. Like, I, I agree with what you're saying, like what the X-Men were always created to be and what they represented and all that kind of stuff. But yeah. I would suggest that putting in a black character like Bishop was not them making a definitive statement, well, this is who we're representing. It's just that right, there, that's are, true. there are black people, so why shouldn't they be represented in the X-Men? And so they yeah. have a black member, or now several black members of the X-Men. Right. If, if you know you have a character and they say, like, like if the original creators can say that, 
listen, everything about, because remember, Morph didn't come from the comic books. Morph was specifically yep. created in, like, these are the creators of the character. They didn't take a comic book character and bring him into their show. They actually True. created the Morph character. And if they say, you know, we always kind of envisioned Morph this way. Like, what the X-Men 97 show is doing is completely in line with how we always saw the character anyway. Yeah. Then why can't, I guess my question would be, why can't that character be put in in on the team like a black character was put on a team, like a female character was put on the team? Like it's I I don't believe that just having them there means the X Men are a complete representation of the LGBTQ community. I think right. you're saying they represent the world kind of the way the other characters do. So I anyway, mean that's just kind of the way 100%. I see it. Hundred percent. Guys, we want to take a second to thank a sponsor of today's video, Harry's. You know, guys, in order to start the John Campia show, I had to leave my high paying corporate job in order to set myself up to be happier and enjoy more personal success. Because sometimes to get what you want, you have to challenge the status quo and blaze your own trail. And that's exactly what the folks at Harry's did. You see, at Harry's, they saw customers getting ripped off by questionable products in the shaving industry and decided to do something better. Harry's decided to pave their own road by making beautifully designed razors for a fraction of the price of the other big brands. Exceptional products, honest prices. That's Harry's. I have fallen in love with Harry's from their foaming shaving gel that feels just luxurious on the skin to their incredible razor that feels just as good in the hand as it does going over your skin. They've got rich lathering skin softening body wash and scents like redwood, wildlands, and stone. You see, Harry's provides German engineered blades made in their own factory that stay sharp longer. You can get a five blade razor, weighted handle, foaming shave gel, and a travel cover for just three bucks at harrys.com slash campia. Don't settle for the status quo. Blaze your own trail with Harry's. Get started with a $13 trial set for just $3 at harrys.com slash campia. That's harrys.com slash campia for a $3 trial set. Uh, you know, and, and the X-Men, I think, remain, I think the, the real important thing is the excitement around the fact that the X-Men are still relevant decades after they were created. And what's been great about them is they have shifted with the times. They have stayed relevant. And so maybe, you know, having uh, defining Morph in this way is going to help the character move forward decades from now. And maybe they'll be doing an X-Men 2007 and 2027, you know? I, I'm curious so, to ask you, though, because I love the original animated show. I yeah. love the X-Men. Um, they were the the comics that I read the absolute most. My all-time favorite comic run is Age of Apocalypse, all that kind of stuff. I have not been excited for X-Men 97, to be honest with you. And and I, I honestly couldn't really tell you why I haven't been. Now, the first reactions came out yesterday, and they sound great. Like, the first yeah. reactions are coming out, and people are, are glowing about it, so that's... But I'm just curious to know, have, have you been looking forward to this show? Have you been excited about it? Well, to be fair, I mean, they ended the X-Men animated series in such a great way, you yeah. know, with the passing of the torch and Xavier and Magneto and all that. And so, you know, and that comic, uh, the animated series, what, came out in 92? So it's 32 years old. Oh, and oh, I think the, the, what, what's really interesting is like I was a big fan. I mean, it kind of went off the rails, but... I was a huge fan of what Jonathan Hickman did in the X-Men because, and a lot of people, it was very controversial. A lot of people didn't like it because the X-Men to me were kind of moribund as a team because they've told the same stories. Even I, who've been reading X-Men for over 30 years, I'm like, it's gotten a little, a little boring. So if the show is good, I'm excited to delve into the stories and see how they're going to, what they're going to do. And because, John, you know, we always say every franchise is one movie or one show away from being great again. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. And, and you know, comic book runs, especially you get bored of a comic. They bring on a new creative team. And with the X-Men, uh, after the fall of X is done, they have all new teams coming out and all new cre I mean, creative teams working on the X books. And they're relaunching the whole line. So I think there's a lot of excitement around the X-Men. We've got Deadpool and Wolverine coming out i think maybe 2024 is going to be the year of x maybe because sure, sure there's a lot going right. on it's pretty cool all right guys question is for you 
What do you think about this? Are you looking forward to X-Men 97? I admit my anticipation has grown a little bit since hearing the first reactions. I'm still not 100% on board. But I mean, listen, if this can be the next arcane or be the next kind of something like that, then yeah, who knows? Maybe I'll get super excited about it. I hope I do. What did you think about the comments by the original creators of the X-Men animated series? Whatever you guys think, jump down to the comment section below and let us know your thoughts. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this video. Make sure you like the video, leave a comment, and subscribe to our channel. And don't forget, we have a daily podcast called The John Campy Show Podcast, available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your favorite podcasting app of choice. Go and subscribe to it today so it'll be there when you need it.